On, on Wednesday, January 6th, uh, we saw an attempted coup take place in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was uh, made up of a number of tendencies that are known as the alt-right. The alt-right is an authoritarian, anti-democratic, small d, political coalition that is made up of a coalition of groups, white nationalists who largely drive that alt-right coalition, Second Amendment activists, uh, private homeschoolers, the theocratic right, uh, and a host of other elements, including paramilitary organizations. Many of these tendencies gather together with the support uh, of Donald Trump and other elected officials under the auspices of stopping uh, the vote count in uh, a joint session of Congress. They were able to breach uh, the Capitol building and it appears through some support, uh, perhaps from civil servants and, and others, uh, and put elected officials at risk uh, and actually, the breach resulted in the death of uh, several individuals, and including a law enforcement officer. We saw uh, a number of attempts to um, attack lawmakers by breaching into their spaces. We've learned that there were attempts to hold those lawmakers uh, hostage or at least injure them. Uh, this is what we saw on January 6th. We should be clear that while these different groupings within this alt-right coalition may have ultimately different goals, they were united in their attempt to overthrow American democracy. They were not there to oppose a policy. They were there to oppose how the United States government functions and governs. It was in a direct attempt to usurp the will of the American people. We are at a moment where uh, the Republican Party and, and the GOP uh, needs to come to terms with itself. It sits now at a choice point where it must decide whether it will defend sedition or defend democracy. And defending democracy means removing the white nationalist elements from its ranks. It means making a commitment uh, to denounce and to oppose political violence. It means being clear that it must hold accountable all of those members of the Republican Party of the GOP who participated in the planning or orchestration of this insurrection. Whether the Republican Party becomes a white nationalist party or re-enters the mainstream of American democracy is dependent on the choices of its leadership. Sadly, too many within the Republican Party carry responsibility for what occurred on Wednesday, January 6th. But we should be clear that the Republican leadership now has to make a choice. And whether they choose to defend or distance themselves, will dictate whether there is a Republican Party 10 years from now. I think the Republican Party can redeem itself if it chooses to, if it chooses to renounce the organized bigots who have tried to take over that party. This is not an attempt to wipe out the Republican Party. This is an attempt to draw a moral line against bigotry. For well over a decade, uh, federal law enforcement, including the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, uh, military intelligence, has warned about the alarming rise of active white nationalists uh, and other uh, hate groups uh, within law enforcement and uh, within private security. Uh, these warnings have, have been ignored. We also know and have witnessed the, this, um, the unequal treatment in policing in ways that law enforcement has treated racial justice activists 
versus how they have treated armed insurrectionists uh, who have actually killed law enforcement officers. I am very concerned about the presence of white nationalists within law enforcement, but I'm more concerned about the unwillingness of senior law enforcement and local government to address that issue. It seems that too many want to play down the fact that law enforcement increasingly is being driven by ideological perspectives rather than the rule of law. This resulted in the death of a law enforcement officer on January 6th. He wasn't killed just by white nationalists or alt-right figures. He was killed by the unwillingness of law enforcement to take this crisis seriously. He was killed right, by the fact that too many law enforcement officers see themselves aligned with the alt-right rather than their mission and vision to protect and serve. They do carry blame and it should make us all very nervous about the potential for political violence moving forward. So all of us in the United States um, need to lean in to this moment. And we don't need to lean in simply because of fear. We should lean in because 75 years of civil rights struggle has brought us to this very moment. Those who sacrificed in previous decades to challenge racial injustice, right? Discrimination against women, right? To defend the rights of the LGBTQ community of immigrants and workers sacrificed much to get us here. What we are witnessing right now in the United States from this alt-right coalition, right? Isn't a revolution, it's a backlash a backlash against the gains of the civil rights movement. We need to refortify the civil rights movement by moving forward. And we move forward by understanding that the white nationalist phenomena is here with us for some time. There is not much we can do to place that phenomena back into a bottle. But the decisions we make in the coming days and years can help to limit the duration of the white nationalist movement and reduce the impact of its political violence on American democracy and on our communities. So I encourage us to do three things. The first is to make sure every elected official publicly denounces the use of political violence, right, as a tool to subvert American democracy and that those who do not publicly do so should be shunned by their own political parties and stripped of their resources and support. The second is that we need a full understanding of the infiltration of law enforcement agencies by the white nationalist movement and other authoritarian leaning uh, movements in this country that promote political violence. And law enforcement agencies have to be equipped to manage this. Now, I'm not saying we punish people because of their ideologies, but we punish people for choosing their ideologies over the rule of law as civil servants in our society. The third is that we keep advancing the work for racial, gender, and economic justice in our society. We keep pushing forward the things that move us all forward together as a nation that address the real terrors in our society of unemployment, of a global pandemic, of social alienation. The worst thing that we can do is to begin to believe the narrative by these authoritarian voices that we are on the verge of a civil war or race war. It's simply not true. Where we are is on the verge of the promised land, the place that folks like Rosa Parks and John Lewis sacrificed so much to bring us to. 
we don't stand at the foot of the mountain. We stop, we stand at the top of the mountain. We are looking over into the promised land and we merely need to build the national will to move into it. We don't do that by hanging on to bigotry. We do it by managing the most bigoted in our nation so that they do not hamper the rest of our society from moving to a place where all of us can live, love, worship, and work free from fear and bigotry. That's the task ahead of us as we move forward. Stacey Abrams and Latasha Brown of Georgia and the hard work that they did on the ground to make sure all votes mattered brought me immense hope in this moment. Learning that President-elect Joe Biden decided to run for the presidency of the United States because of the anti-Semitic and racist events in Charlottesville brings me hope. Watching brave Republican leaders stand up and denounce the insurrection, distancing themselves, trying to hold Donald Trump accountable brings me hope. But what really brings me hope are like the millions of people that I hear of each and every day who are bringing meals to their neighbors, right? Who are leaving envelopes with dollars to their family and friends who are out of work, who leave flowers on the doorsteps of seniors who have been isolated for months. It's those everyday acts of millions of Americans who are made up of immigrants, Muslims, Christians, black, white, native, women, trans, gay, straight, who are just choosing to do one thing, to let other folks know that they matter and care. I see these examples each and every day. And I hope those who are listening right now will ensure that those examples grow exponentially. It is our love for each other that will see us through. It is our hope for the future that will see us through. And that hope grows in the choice to do one thing. And that one thing is to show kindness and to show what's at the heart of the United States of America. The idea that we will stand together, even in the hardest moments.